I've longed to hold you as though you were a baby and I need to motherhood. But circumstances arose, an opportunity I see, to lower my hands into the wells that hold you captive and bring you forth into this bright, embellished life, one that may not be like your own, but one I'd hope to make home. Hello guys, my name is Leke Ogunde, spoken word, art, artist, poet. Um, don't really know what, well, what else to say. Ironically, words fail me when they shouldn't, but the thing I've learned about words is that words are easy. I love you, I need you, I'm here for you, and so on. I like so easy and straight to the point because they don't need to be any more difficult than they are. But the difficult part of this is the courage. So I'm going to show a little courage tonight or today and share a few poems with you and I hope you, hope you do enjoy. So the first one I'm going to read is called Four, which is basically uh, an account of uh, an experience that I went through, basically detailing it after seeing someone else close to me go through the same exact experience. So here's four. Red gates, red gates, jollof rice. I couldn't eat. I used to believe that's all I could remember. But here and there, it comes to me. The robbed remains of fallen men marked in a sea of headstones. On that faithless day, one of us joins rank. Now I hear it like it were yesterday, the scratching wrench of mothers wailing, clouds without lids boiling up, riding up a spill. Rain was a no-show, but sorrow was plenty. Red gates, red gates, I remember more now. I was four, too young, but you were broken. And in soil to wave earthly goodbyes. I remember the lace that covered your body. Is that my disbelief? And the next one I'm going to share with you is called Maogima Woods, which is kind of a lead on from four. And I do hope you like it. It's called, there we go. Maogima Woods, brown and glistening. Doesn't belong in dirt, at least not six feet in the ground. Your body is still drain of blood. But yet, the color and shine of the wood complements like we wear it rather than it containing you. Your age, unknown. Your likes, unknown. Your dislikes, likewise. And the many more things I do not know about you. Nothing says goodbye quite like a closed coffin. Thank you. The next poem I'm going to share is called October 5th which details the, the joy of childbirth and the worries that come with it. Premature joy, deaf and dumb. Surely it was an elation, although your cries birthed a sigh of relief. My beautiful boy, the road I had is testing, full of pity and stares, good intentions and not so much good. Beautiful boy, my worries are minuscule compared to yours. Will you walk? Better yet, will you crawl? Is it dada before mama? Silly me. Easy to forget to remember. You're my burden. That's what they'll say. Rather than your circumstances being your own. I am them, and they are me. Am I worried the other kids won't call you out to play? Or am I worried they will once, and just that once? Thank you. The next poem I'm going to share with you is called Pastimes, which basically accounts for the stigma relating to mental health. And I do hope you like it. Do you not hear the trembling of my voice? Do you not see the pain in my eyes? Oftentimes I've lost myself in loneliness. Not enough words or enough trust to articulate the pain that overwhelmed me time and time again over that period of constant anguish. I'd cry myself to sleep, leaving my pillow like bread soaked in water. Now that I think about it, I should cower in stigma. 
but I won't. This was my eighth hour ritual, your nine to five. And I saw this wasn't about me, but she worried like lovers do. To put her mind at ease, I asked her when I haven't I been present in this past moment. Thank you. The next one is called White Lines, which is pretty self-explanatory. So, hope you do enjoy. And he sniffed and sniffed and sniffed. But he has a big heart. Coke would do that to you. A line there and a line there. It's all great and dandy until it becomes a noose around your neck or a tent on almond ski with vomit as cuddling companion. And then, when he wakes, if he wakes, it's a reminder that he has missed his train to Hell's Gate. Sure, what are his chances of getting in anyways? 80s, Grim Reaper, here is call. He's ready. Thank you. The next one is about my dearly departed, beloved watch, which I lost. So, here's one called Casio. There's time for everything under the sun, even time to lose time. You weren't quite secure. Enough near misses and I should have made you a home in my pocket. But in the end, nothing lasts. Moments pass and memories fade. We would have had to part ways, one way or another. We've had our time. Thank you. And the final poem I'm going to share with you is called My Person. With you, my dear, with you. A world beyond my reaches at my fingertips. Tell me where your war is and I'll fight it. Because death comes regardless. I've faced it once and human nature dictates I'll face it again. My body will remain on earth, but my soul to where judgment dictates. I'll fight it with your love as your, my armor, just to be by you, by your side, as I've promised. And still after all that, I catch a glimpse of myself hurting you with my absent mind. Reminding myself my troubles should be ours by now. But the twinkle in your eyes should never go gray with worries that not yours. Teach me how to love and I'll teach you how to trust. Understanding instincts. Learning what should be a given. My dear, your love has made all the difference. You love me and that's all I want to know. And I sure hope you know the feelings are mutual. Because I did not see myself not loving you. Thank you. Thanks, guy. Once again, it's Leke Ogunde. Thanks for having me. Uh, it's been a blessing, honestly. Thanks for having me here. I want to thank Waterfalls Writers Weekend for having me here. It's a great program. Hope you, hope you catch every little detail that's happening. Thank you, guys. And I'll introduce you to Sam. And I hope you do enjoy. Once again, thanks so much. It's been my pleasure. Thank you. Hello, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Samuel Yakura, poet and performing artist. Um, and I'm delighted to be bringing poetry to your sitting rooms and your bedrooms and wherever you're um, watching from this evening. Um, tonight I'll be sharing a couple of poems and I hope you enjoy them as much as I've written them. Um, so the first poem I'll be doing this evening is Shower Box. Um, and I feel like it's, it's the perfect poem to start off with, um, considering, you know, the, the times that we're in. And um, I was coming back from work um, on this beautiful evening and I was just tired, you know, tired from work, tired from, um, you know, just the challenges, pressure from without, pressure from within. And I decided to jump into the shower and, you know, just, just on nerve, you know, and these words came to me. Um, so I hope you enjoyed them. I always look forward to a hot, long shower. Not just to wash the dirt off my skin as seductive, steaming, flowing water cools my burning temples. Not just to steady the stomp of my racing pulse, but to find a bend, 
sharp at the edge of this cliff I always come to, at the edge of clogged emotions, of unbuttoned ideas, of stuck, sticky, slimy thoughts, leaving trails of soggy, unfinished conversations to find a bend sharp, sharp at the end of a tired day where I can slow-mo as I slow down, burn the rubber to the rims till I hear music in the friction drift, till I unfurl the tendons of de-stiffening muscles, hold that shower head like a corded mic and sing, sing out my soul like a black choir. Sing till I wear out the wanton of worry. Sing till I silence the voices dragging my heart into deep valleys filled with partial judges. These court nannies pacifying my spirit, they do not know that this heart is a whiskey distillery. It is drunk with resilience. I will sing till the weight in my heart falls humpty dumpty to my feet. And when I am done, I will bow my head, rest my hands high on this wet glass. Not in surrender, no, but in readiness. For I know I may be too weak to find peace, but I can go where it finds me, in places like this shower box, for you see, truth, like therapy, does come to us in uncommon spaces where we lay naked and bare. Where we choose not to spend the rest of ourselves to penniless monologues. Now, I will slip into my PJs and say a prayer before I sleep. A pennyful monologue. For tomorrow, we go again. Um, thank you. Uh, somewhere in my mind, I'm assuming everyone's applauding in their sitting room, so... <laughs> Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, and this second poem is titled Man on the Stage. Um, now, this is a poem that's very dear to my heart. Um, it's almost a creed for me. And I wrote it a couple of years ago um, when, you know, I was still a budding poet, just, you know, thinking what I wanted to do with poetry, why I wanted to do poetry, you know. Somehow at the back of our minds, we always think of this, you know, transcendent calling to everything we're doing, you know, why, why do we want to do the things we want to do, you know, and all of that. And um, so I wrote this poem, um, and here goes. Here is not where it all begins, neither is it where it ends, for behind the poet is just a person, a man on a ledge, one walking the plank for a living, compelled by the swords of you pirates to either tell his story your story, any story, as long as it's themed on finding a treasure chest on an island we all somehow seem to own, or to fall off the plank. <laughs> so this is a poem of how I walked back into the ship. For before the invasions of this wrecking rhetoric were the spoils of conquered whispers, the traces of tied tongues, the rubble from broken silence, I was told by strangers my voice would never be loud enough. Even in a cave, it will not be echo enough. You see, behind this tall and regal figure of my youth is sometimes a fragile man, one with more bruised bones than bone marrows. But I have found walking sticks in sharing my backbone with broken men, telling them tales of how I kept my skeletons, not in closets, but in the right hands hoping it would help us enter the spaces we haven't learned to feel like novices playing Tetris behind this one-man cast and my stage-drooling plot is sometimes a tired mind. For the struggle looks too telepathic to be street between pen and paper, heart and mind, spirit and body, but I'm reminded that building bridges for stories to cross is more relieving than the smile of a freed slave. You see, behind... These stage lights and the flashlights is just a boy with a burden from his donkey heart. Sitting behind a small desk with not more shine than a table lamp, his burning dreams and a pen or a hammer, a broom, anything to nurture the future. I am reminded then that this stage is never the brightest corner of the room. You see behind these body props, this costume, like a tie sitting tightly at the center, exalting a gently perfect persona, is sometimes just a character keeping up appearances. Poor civilian soul caught in the crossfires of daily bullets that stage can't bulletproof. So yes, there are still men like us, masquerades who move only to the music and the people, the music they sometimes forget to sing. Behind these theatrics, these well-tailored gestures, finally woven to thread my thoughts in perspective behind these slideshows of facial expressions to create just the right moments 
is sometimes a man with fear in his trunk, sweat in his tank, regret the sound of his horn, past failures be traffic light, heading straight on the road of uncertainty, but I know, I know I cannot stop, for there are passengers in my truck, that on days when I am blinded by the odds, I take my pond of tears and make a mirror. Look long enough and tell myself you're not the only one here, keep moving, lad. That on days when I reap more fruits than brought baskets, I'd remember I sowed the right seeds. Behind this poem is a postman with a letter from your conscience, because I know you sometimes forget to keep in touch. Here is not where it all begins, neither is it where it ends. It is where we measure the distance between the man on the stage and the man behind the scenes, only to find the man in the audience. Thank you. Um, I hope you enjoyed that one. So, um, I think it's about time we do a love poem. Um, so this third poem is a poem about fighting for the ones you love, about fighting for the things that you love. Um, I think I've come to realize life doesn't always give you everything you ask for until you sometimes have to fight for it. And, and so this was in a time where I had a very deep conflict with a very, very good and old friend of mine. And um, instead of just giving up, which is, you know, the rational thing to do or the easier thing to do, um, I decided to fight for this relationship. And um, this poem was birthed from that experience. And it's titled, Questions. I hope you enjoy it. I used to be the only journey you embarked on, the only wave you surfed to shore, the very theme of your perception until your pupils became unlearned. Yes, your pupils became unlearned. For you made me the word whose letters you enslaved with the deaf caps lockers of what they said. You judged me before you heard me. You took me for a picnic, and from your basket of bitter bites, you served me sandwiched words, sorry, sandwiched words I starved. For I only ate the love you once talked about. You crowned me a royal rodent, sheltered only in the dregs of your mind, and subtly you buried me as vanity's treasure in Solomon's minds and changed the password from open sesame to never bother me. You watched me with blind eyes as you gave me up on the gallows of gossip, your hatchet to my spine, this taste of bitter wine, my gullible gulp, your sinister sip, but a toast. To this once upon a time precious lover you once, you once tripped for and crushed for before you crushed on with those hammer. But today, I will not be incredible hawk, just maybe Shrek, for you see, these are not the words of an angry man, this is the word of a loving one behind the face of a monster you painted for you made me the ripple of your stoned heart echoing from the shores of your parched lips this this desert of splintered emotions formed from the wars of your words against mine why you broke down our covalent bond to mere organic chemistry chemistry so I speak these parts of speech to add verb to your faith in me once again, for I am the truth you left for a lie, your muse you left for parks of amusement. I may be the proud one speaking, but are you the humble one listening? For you know that I only was your hot potter until you left to some Tom, Dick or Harry Potter. No, this love is not magic, it's a mystery, a mystery that is not darkness but light yet to be revealed. So I offer you this love once again. One with no similes or metaphors, requires no payouts or benefits, needs no preserves or additives, just, just you and I, the game of hearts, where we both lose to let love win. So let me show you that I am the nudity of your love, naked and not, not ashamed, the nipple of your desires, passion that is untamed, an offer unfeigned, and this I offer to you, my darling, once again. For I, you, we, are all the answers to our questions. Thank you. Um, and the final poem for my set tonight um, is simply a poem that celebrates family and friendship, you know, the ones who hold it down for us, um, the ones who make life even more interesting, um, the ones who help us record 
the most amazing, the craziest moments and memories um, that we always look back to um, and wish we could relive. And so this poem is titled Harmony. Uh, I hope you enjoy it. Life is a burden too grand. Maybe too grand piano for one vocal chord. So when you, while you learn to sing, find them. The ones who still listen to you even when you sound something between a broken tape and a broken dam. When your voice becomes a melody of monkeys, your, your baboon butt heart swinging on the bars of tailing emotions but their patience tells you it's okay to go bananas every once in a while. Those ones, find them. The ones who give no excuses for your excesses but they lift the pen when you need a therapist. They take you by the hand, plunge through the waves of your darkest fears to remind you then that when you and I are more than one, darkness becomes nothing more than a color. They put into the grave the skeletons from your closet so you learn to put on more clothes than you've learned to put on shame. They do not shrink you to your sins. They know failing in yourself is part of something divine, something art. They are your tribe, your kin and your clan. So blow the ram's horn till you summon them. For they are the ones who push you past your limits, ring bells that awaken passions in your spirit. They are never many, just enough. Always there to help you chew when the meat is tough. And when your dreams come true, they will feast wild with you like Vikings. They will rage and rampage. With joy, they will carnage. They will dare shift the seas to make salad from seaweed. Because they remember the days you traded hungry nights to burn the night lights. Those ones, find them. The ones who celebrate you even when the world hasn't yet learned how to. The ones who know you in all your forms and voids, with all your goof and even the days your senses leak through the roof. Those ones, find them. The ones who forgive you for peeing in the sink and the days you thought the plates were born for the sink. Those ones, find them. Sing with them. Then will your life like music find harmony. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, it's been a pleasure um, bringing poetry to your, to, your, to your home, to your space. Um, thank you so much to um, the Waterford Writers Weekend, to Felicia, to all of the organizers. Um, and that is my time. I remain Samo Yakura and hope to see you after the pandemic. See you. Hey everyone, my name is Felicia, also known as Feli Speaks. Firstly, I'd like to thank Waterford's Writers Weekend for having myself and my guests, Leke and Samuel. I'm really excited about today's performance. I have a couple of poems for you guys, and the first is called In Nigeria. And this piece is dedicated to Nigerian citizens at the moment who are protesting against police brutality, hashtag NSARS. Um, and I believe it would be quite remiss of me to not mention and to pay homage and honor their work and their protest at this moment, as I'm Nigerian Irish. Um, yeah, so this piece is called In Nigeria, and it's a short piece, but I hope you like it. How old was the young man at the police checkpoint? 20 years old. What was his punishment? He was held hostage like a runaway slave. He was beating till his skin began to peel and his young blood touched leather seats. He was shot at that moment. What was his crime? Theft. What did he steal? Their courage. You mean nothing. I mean nothing. What is the price of courage in Nigeria? Apparently the life of anyone who dares to have. Thank you. So this next piece is called Still. Uh, I wrote it about COVID-19 and to kind of give a summary analysis or commentary on what is going on in the country and how we're dealing with it as a people. Still, COVID came and Ireland stood still. Shocked at how much could gather at our doorsteps like dust. We wrestled with what we might, what we may, how life will continue and the ways it must. Still, the virus ate through limbs of every family tree. It choked out lives we built roots around. It emptied out purses, cutting money by the foot, rendered hearts bruised, leaving people forgotten, left us breathless for dead. Still, 
We folded into ourselves. We closed behind lock and key, inhaled through fogs of uncertainty. We found fun in the walls of our homes. We made it work, fashioned it for play, carved out sections to feel joy with on the days we didn't know what was next, what could happen. Stood still for those whom age had known beyond a golden jubilee, whose eyes glazed with film real memories, whose daughters have vowed to love them in their sunset, whose sons have kissed them in their sunrise. We want your vision of us in full color. Stood still for frontline workers armed with nothing but faith, for emerging minds that must dare to dream in high definition, for lonely minds glaring at love through a screen, for bodies creating homes in cardboard boxes. Still, for you, Ireland is standing still. But tomorrow, when our knees grow soft with impatience and the gates of our homes swing open, which way would our legs go? Which path does our heart know? So this piece is called A Broken Connection, and it's more of a nuanced perspective about an imagined story with pieces and bits of truth in it from other people's stories, including mine, that um, reflects you know, a nuanced perspective of how COVID can affect somebody's life and how life is still happening despite COVID. Um, and what, that, look, what c that can look like on a family structure of some kind. So I hope you like A Broken Connection. So it's day, um, I've stopped counting, if I'm being honest. It has no more bearing on how I continue to exist, you know. It's been a long time, I know that much. It's been a long time living by myself, with myself, you know? Ugh. This quarantine shit is hard. It's hard doing it with someone you don't like, you know? Or someone you don't know enough to like. Or someone you've avoided knowing. It's hard when you're one of the someones. But I've taken to this, you know, looking. At first, I just needed a distraction from all the counting, and all the quarantining, the isolation, the self that judges me in the bathroom mirror, I'm tired of her. <laughs> but then I got curious, like I got really curious about them, my neighbors, like the couple that lives in house number 18, both surprisingly really enjoy kissing outside. Like there isn't enough room in the house, I suppose. Or the guy that lives in house number three, he's so routine. I know what he does every day at 4 p.m. He pops out to Lundis, gets a twister ice lolly, five minutes away from his wife. <laughs> but my favorite family, my favorite neighbors, live in house number 12. And they have a daughter. She mustn't be any more than three, but she's as sharp as a tack. She has this way of consistently drawing her father's eyes with her pudgy little feet stumps. The pair would open the door in hopes of like going on a walk in the sun as the leaving cert weather has arrived. The pair would come outside and flash, she's gone. <laughs> She runs as fast as possible. I like, her feet can hardly even, <laughs> you can hardly see it. Barely catch her. And the best part is, her dad seems to enjoy it. He lets her. He let her get as far as possible. Till she gets to the gates. And she would turn around checking if he's following her like this. She gets to the gates of the estate and yells, I win, I win. The shock is feigned. The smile is hidden. And he runs past the front 
windows of my house in a fake little run, just in an attempt to catch her. And then it dawned on me, her dad really liked her. I mean, not just dutifully love her, he really liked her. I'd like to be liked by my dad. Maybe, kinda. The sentiment is nice. I didn't go home for lockdown. I can make my own prison. My sister called yesterday morning. She said to meet her at the hospital. They left at eight o'clock. She said, dad has been having trouble breathing lately. He's old, he's ill, all the symptoms. She said, you're just gonna have to suck this up and get over it. She said he might die. She said, I will regret it. She said, just forgive him. I said, I didn't know how. I didn't know where to put the pain of neglect. It's directionless, it's just anger. She sighed the sigh that only the beloved could. Like I was disrupting her day. I just nodded as she continued with her demands. Oh look, they're out again. <laughs> the door opens. The shock is feigned. The smile is hitting. The fake little run. Uh, <laughs> victory! Her voice yelling, I win, I win. Dad passed today. I lost, I lost. So this piece is called To Era. I wrote it at the start of lockdown, at the height of the confusion, the panic, the not knowing what to do, the what does Ireland do in this situation moment. And thankfully, I, I had an opportunity to write something and to address it to Ireland and it was part of an an amazing project, but I also think it's, it deserves to be uh, performed today at Waterford Writers Weekend. So I hope you like this piece, To Era. Hail Mary, full of grace. Dear Ireland, we've been here before. We've been counseled through plights and plagues a time or twice. We've come to know the stench of grief, the stance of grave digging. The six feet to shovel for both man and son. We have heard disease take sound from markets before and feet from entire streets. We have seen it snuff life from complete cities, leaving nothing lit but stars and beggars. We know the lips of the babes that are stolen meat from, the sons of, the daughters of. We were there when it once laid waste to their families, brought error to her knees, barren, lame from work. Empty, fled for work, hungry, too weak to work. We planted the leaders of our tomorrows, tomorrows. We've done it before. We grew them rebellious, we fed them till they were chest full of bread and hope, and they stood on occasions that required rising. The Lord is with thee. Dear Ireland, the crucifix gave us an intricate spine, propped up by patriarchal paper pillars. Please pardon not the wolves that led the sheep to their slaughter. They often found us hungry too. We incubated in the position of surrender. We were fed scriptures in the condition of shame. Till we were too full of religion. Till we spent every rod on every child, none spared for the robed sinners. We genuflected at every verse, hymn, and command. We raised flesh and blood before the altar. We raised our own flesh and blood before the altar until they became the feast, till they were eaten and etched silent into them, till we seared every secret scream open. Blessed art thou amongst women. 
their island. This green isle still has map lines of bloodied boats slithered around its coasts, its jagged borders smothered in its women's heavy sighs, remembering waves have not yet washed away hundreds sacrificed, neglecting, laundries have not yet scrubbed clean thousands marginalized. We dug out babies' bodies, ripped them from wombs, then their tombs from tomb. We named them without knowing calling their names like children of friends we could have known. We buried them and denied their resurrection. Our women exhumed bones we didn't pay caskets for. We were given back bodies we had since mourned, but we still sang our songs. We still marched our marches. Blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Dear Ireland, the virus is gliding through the globe like a samurai sword. It is cutting oxygen out of clansmen and tribes people, doctors and scientists, students and brothers, grandmothers and parents. It is taking some for prisoner and others for death, error. It is not allowing shrugged shoulders and tongue tuts to chase it out of sight. It won't rest just because we laughed it out of our gatherings, error. It is sending us to watch from our balconies to hide behind our curtains. It won't last because we will wash it from our memories. Holy Mary, Mother of God. Dear Ireland, your corners are heaving with the unremembered. They are lodged by the sons of this soil with cardboards for homes and hoodies for beddings. They stroke the city pavements like ghosts we can walk through. They haggle their survival with tourists in colorful backpacks. They sit on doubling bridges begging for their birthright. They are too tired to weather storms brewed before their time. They are too hungry to dream bigger than the coins we forgot inside our purses, and they are too lost to feel at home. Pray for us sinners. Dear Ireland, we know survival well. We've lived a thousand of these times before. We have never stopped living. Even when our jaws were swung shut by our neighbors, our mouths swollen with the nostalgia of our mother's mother's tongue, we have never stopped living. Even when we couldn't pass culture in the way we inherited it, when our stories found our children without fathers nor fathers, we never stopped living. Even when we had to soften the Irish in our name, the culture in our accent, the ahus in our gilga, we never stopped living. Even when we were given another sound to soothe our children, to announce our rituals, to call our God, we never stopped living. Now at the hour of our death, Dear Ireland, you have given birth to a people that can be themselves. You have given love to a people that can save themselves. Dear Ireland, amen. Well done. So this piece is called What Heaney Said. And I'm including it in the list of poems for today because one, it's Waterford Writers Weekend, and it would be criminal not to include a legend in the list. Um, so I love this Seamus Heaney's piece, and I'm doing a response to it um, while doing his piece. So I hope you like it. What Heaney said. Between his finger and his thumb, the squat pen rests snug as a gun. The pockets of our great coats full of barley, no kitchen on the run, no striking camp. We move quick and sudden in our own country. The priests lay behind ditches with the tramp. A people hardly marching on a hike. We found new tactics happening each day. We cut through rain and ride her with the pike and stampede cattle into infantry. And then we retreat through the hedges where Calvary must be thrown until on Vinegar Hill, the final conclave. Terrace thousands died, shaking sides at the cannon. The hillside blushed, soaked in our broken wave. We were buried without shroud nor coffin. In August, the barley grew up out of our grave. By God, the old man could handle a spade. Between his finger and his thumb, the prop pen rests snug as a gun. Between my finger and my thumb, the prop pen shoots like a passed on baton. The pockets of our great fathers were once full of barley. Ours are brimming with grains ingrained in us. These seeds first planted bore the first fruits of freedom. We move quick and sudden in our own country. We move quick and suddenly, the priest no longer lays behind anything or anyone. We've rescued the tramps with our marches. Marching, we cut through the rains that plowed silence from infancy. 
Dove Vinegar Hill met fatal conclave, and the tiger the Celts reared met its own grave. We can no longer be buried without shroud nor coffin, no more the barley grown graves, just people, just fighters, fathers and mothers with names. <laughs>